Ladies and gentlemen, good evening and welcome to Miami Beach, Florida, USA. We are live on the zone. Sky Sports and Fight TV, where tonight, Mr. Eddie Hearn of Matchroom Boxing USA is proud to present a World Championship Triple Header, sponsored by JD Sports. This bout is in association with Thompson Boxing and World of Boxing. This bout is sanctioned under the auspices of the World Boxing Association. The president, Gilberto Jesus Mendoza, the supervisor, Francisco Pina, and the International Boxing Federation. The president, Daryl J. Peoples, the supervisor, Melvina Lathan. Introducing your three judges scoring this world title contest from ringside. From Florida, Rodolfo Aguilar. Also from Florida, Carlos Sucre. And from Puerto Rico, Nelson Vasquez. At the sound of the bell, your third man in the ring from Florida, referee Frank Gentile. And now, ladies and gentlemen, 12 rounds of boxing scheduled for the unified WBA and IBF Super Bantamweight Championships of the World. Introducing first, the challenger, fighting out of the red corner, standing with his head trainer, Joel Diaz. He wears silver with black trim. He scaled 121.4 pounds. This Southpaw 2016 Olympic bronze medalist now boasts a perfect professional record. Seven fights, seven victories, six of them coming by way of knockout. Fighting out of Indio, California, by way of Namangan, Uzbekistan. Here is the skilled and highly regarded WBA number one ranked super bantamweight contender, Murajan MJ Akmaliyev. Akmaliyev. And his opponent across the ring, the defending champion, fighting out of the blue corner. He stands with his head trainer, Eddie Gonzalez. He wears the red, white, and blue. He scaled already 121.6 pounds. His professional record, 27 victories, two defeats, one draw. He's got 10 wins coming by way of knockout. Fighting out of Los Angeles, California, and tonight, appearing in his sixth world title contest, introducing the reigning, defending, unified, WBA and IBF Super Bantamweight Champion of the World, Danny. The baby-faced assassin, Roman. Roman. Okay, guys, go get him. Fighter. Fighter. Anything below here, I'm gonna call. Okay. Keep them, keep them clean. You got your instructions in the dressing room. Listen to my, my, my commands at all times. Keep your hands up at all times. Protect yourself at all times. Any questions? Any questions? Touch them up. Good luck. Good luck. One. The first fight two, of our main card, three, a unification title fight. The WBA and IBF Super Bantamweight titles on the line two. as Danny Roman looks to defend his belts against I'm not MJ Akhmadaliyev. Stay back. Matisse, Matisse. Start of round number one. Akhmadaliyev in the white and black trunks. Danny Roman in the white, red, and blue. You know, I asked a member of Akhmadaliyev's team early this evening what they were worried about with Danny Roman, and they said Danny Roman needs a miracle. So there's a lot of confidence coming out of Akhmadaliyev's camp. Akhmadaliyev with incredible power. And something his trainer Joel Diaz touted to us yesterday, the power in both of Akhmadaliyev's hands, as well as the elusiveness. Power and athleticism. He punches in different angles, which is very difficult to do. It takes athletic ability and, of course, natural brute power, and he has it in both hands. And Roman's camp admitted that in his early days of training camp, there were certain things they had to do a little differently 
as he recovered from the shoulder injury and a big left hand there from Akhmedalia. Well, under ideal circumstances, I think this is a questionable fight for Roman to take for all the business reasons we named earlier, but it was only a six-week camp surgery. And for a fight like this, I would think you'd want a longer one and you want to be completely healthy for it. That was a surprising move by Roman, not only the, the short camp, but coming off an injury to take such a tough fight like this. But that just shows the greatness that Roman has. He wants to prove that he's the best one at 122. Good shot there. Akhmedaliyev. Akhmedaliyev said he believes Roman is the 122 pounder that deserves the most respect in the world. You know, there's a feeling amongst Roman's team they may have to survive a storm early on, but their goal is to take this fight to later rounds, a place that Akhmedaliyev really hasn't gone. He's one fight past six rounds, so that's where Denny Roman feels he has a big advantage. When, when I asked Akhmedali if, if that's a concern, I asked Joel Diaz the same thing. He said, no, more experience is, is not really a concern for us because Akhmedali has that amateur pedigree and background from the Olympics. He's fought every style. Akhmedali, a bronze medalist in 2016. Out of Uzbekistan. left uppercut by Roman. That's one of his best punches is the uppercuts. It, they're really sneaky shots. He doesn't really pull back his elbow to get leverage or power. It's just a short shot, but it does much damage. Roman coming off that war and victory against TJ Dahani and Sergio Morocco was fight of the year in 2019. End of round number one. Okay, so let's make sure we keep our hands up, okay? Right? Okay. Listen, I need you to work on your jab. Just touch him on the glove. Beat him to, beat him to your left. Let the right hand go, okay? okay? Straight down to the chest. Got it? Okay? Every chance that you can get, put the uppercut. Tell me when the right house on top. All right? Okay. Make sure once you finish. Here we're gonna see Ahmed Aliyev. Instead of coming in with a one-two, he did a two-one from that left-handed stance, and that's why it caught Roman off, off guard right there. He wasn't expecting the second punch to the line like that. He expected a 1-2, not a 2-1 from the left-hander. Stay back, stay back. Start of round number two, the WBA and IBF Super Bantamweight title on the line here in Miami, Florida. An awesome atmosphere, Super Bowl weekend. Big left hand there from Akhmedalia. Stabbing with the right jab. One of the things that Danny Roman's trainer, Eddie Gonzalez, made sure to point out was the success that Roman has had against Southpaws in his career. Yeah, this is his third Southpaw in six fights. Back to bat Southpaws for uh, Daniel Roman. And for boxers, usually we try to do everything to avoid a Southpaw. But not Daniel Roman. The body shot by Akhmedaliyev. That's Roman coming in. Oh, and Akhmedaliyev nearly lost his footing as Roman then goes to the body. You know, both these guys are excellent bottom punchers, and it's a big part of their respective attacks. If you remember the fight against Gandhi, Danny Roman hurt it badly with a body shot in the later stage of that fight, but it really made the difference in that contest. Both fighters were hurt, but Gandhi went down, bleeding from his mouth. I mean, it was just a courageous performance on his part, and another unification, but Roman proved that he's one of the best in this division. A career-long layoff, 279 days for Daniel Roman. Big left hand there from Akhmedalia. You can see how heavy Akhmedalia's punches are right there. Not only is he elusive, but he has those heavy hands, and it, it comes from any angle. It's very difficult to, to prepare for that. Good body shot right there, Akhmedalia coming in. Right hand from Roman. Well, as much as we've talked about being surprised Roman took this fight, Akhmedalia said he was not, because he knows Roman is a warrior. 
So when it comes to boxing and sweet science, we know that speed beats power, but timing and technique beats speed. And right now, Roman, he's hoping to, to, to catch the faster Akhmadali, the strong Akhmadali of coming in with the timing. If you're wondering why we were asking about Roman's decision to take this fight, you can already see it just with the power of Akhmadali. Not only that, but he's the favorite in this fight, Akhmadali, with only seven fights, this being his eight. Now, if you talk to most people in boxing, they believe Akhmadali is the real deal. 7-0, six knockouts to begin his career. 25 years old. How do you feel? I got just this now. Yes, sir. Okay, good. Kaka, you have to work body, body, so he can bring his defense down. When you, when you pull back, up, boom, boom. Okay. Okay. Here we see MJ Akhmadaliev come around trying for the right hook. I love it when Southpaw's throw right hook, but that left, that overhand left right there caught Roman backing up on the neck and the side of the jaw. Couldn't get that counter in, but. MJ Mock Akhmadali are coming down. forward with the loop and swinging Second shots, left hook and right hooks. Go. What'd you think about the instruction in the corner from Joel Diaz to MJ Akhmadali? I love the instructions. I mean, he had a great trainer in his corner, Joel Diaz. He gave him the perfect instructions. Start of the third round. Danny Roman and MJ Akhmadalia. The WBA and IBF Super Bantamweight title on the line. Roman said he was expecting Akhmadalia to try and take him out in the early rounds. Chris, how are you scoring this thus far? Yeah, I've got a two rounds to none for Akhmadalia. I thought the first round was close, but I thought the second a pretty clear round. Rockadalia. The Sergio pointed out the speed is a big difference there. Roman's going to get busier and maybe be a little more of a bully in the ring. Notice how Osmodali, awesome this is the amateur pedigree. Anytime he gets near the ropes or, or the perimeter of the ring, he gets right back in the middle of the ring. That's exactly what a, a successful amateur is doing if they bring it into the professional ranks. That's ring generalship at its best. Keep the fight in the middle of the ring. You know, Sergio, I make fun of the belts a lot, you know, on these broadcasts and in everyday life. But, you know, when I asked uh, Danny Roman why he's taking this fight, he talked about that title. And it took him seven years to get a world title limited to win a world title fight. He wants to hold on to it. It means a lot to him, so he's willing to risk it in this type of fight. He even said, look, it took me seven or eight years to get an elimination bout. How did MJ get here this quickly? Well, rankings are known to be manipulated. Yeah, Roman told us who has MJ beaten to get this opportunity. But here he is wanting to, to become a unified champion in his eighth fight. Just, just incredible on his part, how gifted he is. Flurry's exchange in the center of the ring here in round number three. Both fighters are in good body shots, fighting at their strength. And Daniel Roman, he's, he's looking to counter with good technique and timing. And of course, MJ Akhmadali is looking to, to get an angle on him, being elusive with that power. Roman going to the body of Akhmadali. Roman missed eight weeks with a shoulder injury. And because of that, had the abbreviated six-week camp that Chris Maddox was telling you about. That sneaky uppercut there by Daniel Roman. Hey. 
Well, there are three championship fights tonight. And next up, Tevin Farmer and Jojo Diaz. And Sergio, you've talked about this. Tevin Farmer does not seem to have a whole lot of respect for Jojo Diaz and any vulnerabilities he may have with Diaz in the ring tonight. No respect for Jojo Diaz. And you know what? You got to respect Farmer for having that because he knows he's one of the best, if not the best, in this division. He's a world champion. He's overcome amazing odds. I mean, he's the real deal, and he thinks he is, and he's backing it up. Seconds out. Seconds. Start of round number four. One of the interesting perspectives shared by Akadalia is saying how he's excited, but he's not overexcited. He feels like other young prospects getting a chance like this wouldn't quite know how to have that right level of excitement for this opportunity. Expect this fight to pick up in this round. They want more combinations out of Daniel Roman. And of course, we know that Akhmedaliev is always looking for the knockout. Yeah, you're seeing it right away, Sergio. Increased activity early in this fourth round. Yeah, Sergio, to your earlier point, it doesn't like Roman is trying to time something there, but Akhmedaliev is so fast and he's so elusive. He gets out of there quickly when he throws those combinations. And that's what makes him special. If he was a little bit more flat-footed doing all that, a fighter like Roman would time him. I mean, he's too good. He's a champion. He will have to catch him off guard. But he's Akhmedaliev is not giving him that chance. He's elusive in there. He's strong, and you have to respect that. Roman missing with that uppercut. Dahlia able to dive out of the way after he landed the left. Again, Akhmedalia evades. Roman tries to punch through the mitts. None of that landing for Danny Roman. Good stabbing jab there by MJ. Roman putting on the pressure now that he's doing exactly what they want him to do. Start, start putting pressure on him, backing him up, throw some combinations. Nothing landing clearly, but at least Roman is following instructions. You can see a little pizzazz in the swinging shoulders there of Akhmedalia, who's known for his dancing. Body shots there from Roman. Zakadalia then hustles him against the ropes. He's warned about his head by referee Frank Gentile. Whenever you're dealing with an elusive fighter, you always got to concentrate on the body, and that's exactly what Danny Roman did right there. And four, five good body shots. Another body shot landed by Roman that time with the right hand. Finding success with his body shots, and they're counter body shots at that. So MJ can't just leap in like he has been doing with, with his elusiveness and athletic ability because he's getting countered hard to the body by Roman. And again, you see some of the dance moves of MJ Akhmedalia. He decided to be called MJ in part because of his love of Michael Jackson. The other reason he felt people had a tough time pronouncing his first name, Maraja. Stream live sports on DAZN. Just search D-A-Z-N in your app store and download DAZN to your smart TV, mobile device, computer or games console. Click on the subscription plan, sign up and create your account. Start streaming live sport, exclusive weekly content, archive events and award-winning documentary films. Only on DAZN. Right? And here's what I really liked about that last round by Roman. He's not countering to the head now, he's countering to the body. Whenever you're dealing with an elusive fighter that knows how to use ring generalship and use the ring, it's the body that you're gonna catch. It's hard to get those headshots, but downstairs Second will be down. a lot easier. Second! Go to work, the guy. come on! 
You, know, you heard the corner from Roman there saying, we need you White to be the water. one applying the pressure. Joel Diaz, the trainer of Rock Vidalia, said he wants his guy applying smart, effective pressure. I think he's doing a better job in this fight so far. I know you gave the first two rounds to Akhmedalia. How about the last two, Chris? Yeah, I've got it three rounds to one in favor of Akhmedalia. He's just landing the cleaner shots. I mean, Roman's doing his best. He's landing some effective punches, but it feels like Akhmedalia is landing more clean ones. You gave that last round to Roman, right? I did not. The last round, I think Roman had some pretty good success to the body. He had his moments. I just thought Akhmedalia was more consistent. The thing Roman said was he wanted to be careful early and then break down Akhmedalia. The game. Good body shots there from Roman. And that's what he did in the last one. He's counting to the body now. And that's oh. what set up that left hook right there. I mean, the left uppercut. Big left uppercut that landed from Roman. And now back to the body. And Roman is a very confident, poised champion. He doesn't, he doesn't waste any punches. Calm poker face, but he's ready for the counter. He has the speed to catch you off guard. He has enough power to get your respect, but it's the timing that makes him efficient. Well, if you want to slow down Akhmedalia, the best way is to go to that body and see if you can get him to lose a step. Let's check in with Claudia Treos, who's been chatting with Akhmedalia's trainer, Joel Diaz. Thank you, Ryan. I just spoke with Joel Diaz, so I want you guys to look at a change in tactic. At the beginning, Akhmedalia was looking to frustrate Roman. Now, walking into the 6th and 7th round, he's looking to close the gap, go for the body, and look for the knockout on top. All right, Claudia, we'll see if MJ can find that. Two really left, left hands of the body that Akhmedalia had landed caught the atten attention of Roman. So exactly what Claudia says, I can see that MJ's doing that, trying to set up something big upstairs. The big shots have picked up here in round number five. Roman stuck that right hand through the mix, caught a great from Akhmedalia. Akhmedalia reminded to keep these punches up. I love that by MJ. He went downstairs, it was a little bit low. He got warned and he went right back downstairs. Not discouraged. to get that right hand in there. And again, looking to get to the body as Akhmedalia covered up. And then unleashes his own combination up top. Big left hand there from Akhmedalia. And a couple of big shots and a nice combination to finish round number five from MJ Akhmedalia. Let's go! Молодец. Не стыкай, не оставайся, понял? Не стыкай, не оставайся, понял? Движение, удар, движение, удар. Вы! And here are the hooks coming around the guard of Roman. Really caught the attention of Roman, backing him up right there. I think that's the, that's one of the first times I've seen Roman really get a little discouraged backing up against the ropes right there. Oh, and he was hurt in that moment, Serge. He went back to the corner, put his hand up on the ring rope to balance himself out there. That bell might have saved Danny Roman. That's a bad sign. Anytime a fighter puts his hands on the ropes, it's a sign of, it's a sign that something's wrong with him. Either he's tired or he got hurt a little bit. Given the information Claudia shared moments ago about Joel Diaz wanting Akhmedalia to put himself in position for a knockout in round six and seven, we'll see if Akhmedalia can take advantage of Roman and the way he was hurt at the end of that fifth round. Fight. And maybe down right now, but he knows he's been in these types of fights before. 
And Ahmed yeah. Daddy is not, so opportunity is still there. See, I like that that Roman did right there. He's, he, he's just punching out Magalhaev's elbows and his biceps and shoulders. He knows that it's hard to hit a moving target like this, but if you can just touch anything right now, that's success, and you can just, you'll get confidence going into the round. Roman has talked about confidence in the way it raises the deeper into the fight he gets without Magalhaev. Chris, you talked about his team as well feeling that way. Big left hand there as Akhmedali have tried to work through the defense of Roman. Joel Diaz saying what he believes is unique about Ahmedaliyev is how elusive he is with both hands. Strong with both hands. And when I asked Joel Diaz, why take this step with only seven fights against a unified champion like Daniel Roman? It's because Joel Diaz, no, he, he knew Daniel Roman from his fights in Ontario when he was with Thompson Promotions. He's seen him come up. So he knows uh, his vulnerabilities and is very confident coming into this fight. And you also know your own fighter too, right, Sergio? I mean, he knows what he's got. So not but not. He knows this kid is pretty special. He said, because he's ready. Yeah, I told you all this. So it's basically you scouted. You have the scouting report on Roman. He says, absolutely. I've seen him coming up the ranks in four, six, eight round fights in the Thompson cards. And that's what gives him this, this confidence. Punch there from Akhmedaliev, who gets a stern warning at the end of the round. I need more activity from you right now, okay? Okay? I need more fucking activity from you. I need you to get that right hand again in there. Get the right hand, double up on it. Then start digging the body. Do not abandon the body. That'll, that'll pay dividends, all right? But I need you to do that. I need you to follow instructions. You, you're waiting too long. You're waiting too long. Put the pressure on him. Okay? As soon as you hit him, if he moves, just cut the ring. Match his forward. All right? Come on. I need you to start landing your solid shots. Come on, Kakao. You need to work more. You're only, doing, you're only doing two punches per combination. You need to work more. Let's go. Pick it up. Let's go, Kakao. You can Here stop Joel him. Diaz telling MJ Akhmedaliev okay, to pick it up. And, and Danny Roman's corner. Eddie Gonzalez saying, look, I need more activity from you. Oh. Yeah, look, more great advice, I think, is coming from Eddie Gonzalez in Danny Roman's corner. He keeps saying, go to the body. 42% of the punches that Roman lands in his fights are body shots. You're not seeing the same type of commitment in the first half of this fight. But you got to credit that to Akhmedaliyev for not giving him a chance to land those body shots. He's moving around, around the perimeter of the ring, always keeping the fight in the middle of the ring. The, the agility and athleticism is keeping Roman from landing the, the high percent of shots. All right, Chris, through six rounds, how do you have it? I got four rounds to two in favor of Akhmedalia. He's been pretty much excellent throughout. Even the ones the rounds that Daniel Roman won, I thought they were pretty close. So, strong first half of this fight for MJ Akhmedalia. Roman trying to pepper the body in the air of Akhmedalia. Now Akhmedalia with his own body shots. Akhmedalia lands more punches because he's a faster fighter, but the timing is on Daniel Roman's side. Roman from the rail through the mix of Akhmedalia. Big shot with the right hand from Akhmedalia after the left set it up. That was a good team combination from Akhmedalia. It was a 2-1 from the southpaw stance again. Instead of leading with that, that jab, he came with the straight left hand just to land a straight right hand. It's an awkward combination, but if you're athletic and your feet can follow your hands, 
It's actually pretty effective. And you're starting to see more of that lunging straight left hand from Akadali in his last two rounds. He clearly sees something in the guard of Danny Roman that makes him willing to let that punch go. Because when you're dealing with a fighter like Roman with good technique, he expects a 1-2 coming out of his opponent. He doesn't expect a 2-1. Just missed with that counter hook. Ramon trying to get back to that body, but Akwadalia able to defend. Ramon landed a left hand there up top after touching the right with the body. See the force of Akwadalia's left hand. Shot to the body to end the round. Okay, you good? That's it, just push. Great. Okay, problem? Yes, problem, guys. Work! Hey, he's a champion. You need to work more. Don't you feel another about the push? Understand? Come on, Kaka. You're not tired, right? You tired? Okay, let's go to work. You put the steel in this. Here we're going to see the favorite punch of Roman, which is an uppercut. Solid uppercut landed, splitting the guard of Akhmedaliev. That's what I want to see more from, from uh, Roman. Jabbing your way in. If you can't, if you can't really catch up to your target with speed, you got to do it with timing and, and jabs. You know, Joel Diaz in the corner, talking a lot like a guy that knows that sometimes with judges you've got to take that title away from the champion you've got to even though you might be winning a lot of these rounds you've got to make sure you take that fight from the champion and that's what makes him one of the best trainers in boxing Akhmedaliev has ascended quickly to this title shot it's just his eighth professional fight actually fought in a scheduled 10 rounder in only his fourth pro fight Highly irregular. With his extensive amateur career, he has been hurried along here in the pros as he chucks Roman against the ropes and then is reminded by Frank Gentile that's not okay. Yeah, it's become almost the norm for a lot of these fighters with these deep amateur backgrounds coming from some of these former Soviet countries to take fights to early on to be fast-tracked in their career. You saw it at the highest level with this little Lomachenko. You're seeing another level here with Akhmedalia. Sergio, what do you need to see more of from Roman? And, well, before that, uh, and to touch on that, Chris, not only is Akhmedalia from those Eastern European uh, countries that usually stand real stiff behind a good one, too, He's breaking all those rules, MJ is. He's more, he's more moving around the ring and using speed and angles. That, that, that's not the Eastern European way of fighting behind the jab. He's more stiff. No, he fights with a flair to his style, where he keeps his hands down a lot and moves, dances in the ring. Okay, Roman, uh, Ryan, I want to see more jabs and, of course, body shots. But he needs a sense of a little bit of urgency here. He, he needs to... The fight's not slipping away from him, but he might be behind on points from the Chris Manic scorecard, but I do think MJ is in control of the fight, so a little more pressure and body shot, just like that. Counting everything downstairs. She, according to CompuBox, through seven rounds, Roman has thrown and landed a higher number of punches and a higher percentage. That's sort of what you're talking about, Chris, in regard to the power punches. In regard to Joel Diaz, and the advice he's giving in the corner of Akhmedalia. Even though you feel good, sometimes you really got to wrestle those belts away. Big left hand there from Akhmedalia. And again, with the left. 
as Romani can see trying to get that uppercut through. That's his best punch. It's up there. Oh, there was a big left hand uppercut from Romani as he timed it perfectly that time. Sergey, you brought this up last round. That uppercut has been there for Roman these last few rounds, landing at least three of them in this round so far. Big left hand of the body from Akhmedali, and then a left hand up top. Outstanding activity and a late shot there from Danny Roman, who says, my bad, I know, at the end of that eighth round. Here we see Daniel Ron land that uppercut. That's his best punch. Left uppercut right on the bottom of the chin of MJ Akhmedaliev, but Akhmedaliev came right back knowing that that was a good shot he landed, coming back with four, five, six punches. Yeah, but you watch that, Sergio. Roman slipped a lot of those. Oh, no, I get it. Come on, but Danny. Roman landed the better shot, the clean shot. All I'm saying is MJ came back punching. That's what you want to see if you want to take the title away from the champion. In round nine, Chris, you set the table early on about the thought would be these could be the rounds where Danny Roman uses that veteran experience to close out the fight and perhaps retain the belts. Maybe you saw some of that towards the end of the eighth round. Yeah, well, it's the great unknown with Akhmedalia, who has never been, only been past the sixth round just once. Now, in that one fight, when he passed the sixth round, he was excellent at, at putting on pressure later in the round. So, I've got Akhmedalia up right now, but Roman still has a, definitely enough time to close the game. Nice combination. How about the exchange there from Danny Roman and Marat John Akhmedalia? Watch that opportunity tonight in Miami. <laughs> West right catches from the midst of Akhmedalia. With right hand counter from Roman. Roman has been doing everything he needs to do as far as counting the punches. Just right now, MJ is a little bit too athletic. Not giving him a chance to find anything. But see, that's effective work right there. Body shots and uppercuts by Roman. We've seen some very effective uppercuts from Dan Roman over the last couple of rounds. Dan tried to work that uppercut through. towards the end of it from MJ Akhmedalia.
This is a dangerous position that Danny Roman was in. His right arm was extended. And if MJ would have landed that shot cleanly, that would have been devastating. But luckily, luckily for Roman, it ricocheted off his ribcage. But that was a clean body shot by MJ Akhmadaliev. And you see that cut just under the right eye of Daniel Roman. Bad place for a cut. Let's see if these final two rounds, it becomes a factor. Sergio, you were very excited for this fight. How has it played out compared to what you were anticipating seeing between these two fighters? I expected it to be a little bit more physical, and with that, a little bit more violent. But Akhmadaliev hasn't given Roman that opportunity to do that. It's still like, it's still an intense, uh, intense fight, but there's one person that's in charge right now, that's MJ Akhmadaliev, who is boxing and not letting Roman set his feet to get those power shots. Roman trying to set up those power shots. And once again, Akhmadaliev able to athletically swing away. It's an intense fight, but it's not a physically intense fight because Akhmadaliev is doing the right thing, not letting it become a, a physical fight. And you can see the blood protruding from that cut that Chris was talking about. Let's check in with Claudia Trejos. Thank you, Ryan. I just spoke with Joel Diaz. He says the cut is not even a factor. He thinks it's not a, an issue. It's not really swollen, so it shouldn't cause any issues for Akhmadalia. So that cut is not an issue for Akhmadalia, but will that cut in the right eye of Roman be an issue? We shall see. Yeah, the Akhmadalia cut well below the eye line on the cheekbone almost. The Roman cut. Sergio, you're going to test this, probably the most possible spot, right on that. Yeah, it, it, could, be, it could be a bad, bad cut, especially if the ice starts swelling. Nice combination there from Akhmadalia. Oh, and another big left hand from Akhmadalia. And if nothing else, Akhmadalia looks like he's in incredible condition for this fight. Just work here in the end of the 10th round. He looks as fresh as he did in the first round. But he's getting a little bit more aggressive. Both of them are getting a little bit more aggressive. More of the physical, physical fight that I was expecting. Well, this is as deep as Akhmadaliev has ever been in a fight. Now it's seen in the 10th round. Starting with one to the body. Now it's Roman backing up, fighting off the back foot. Trying to counter the more aggressive Akhmadaliev coming forward. Try that uppercut. Akhmadaliev then peppers the body. And again, the flurry unleashed from MJ Akhmadaliev. to start working. We're gonna see the end of the round. Roman looking for that uppercut, but it was MJ Akhmadalia coming forward, flurrying to the body. And some good body shots right there on Roman. Second out! Yeah, the message is pretty consistent these last few rounds coming out of the corner of Roman. We've gotta be more active, we've gotta be busier, we've gotta throw more punches. Chris, what does your scorecard look like at this point? Well, I thought Akhmadali in his last couple of rounds asserted himself once again and has given himself a pretty commanding 97-93 lead on my card. Akhmadali is power boxing at its best right here because he's not strictly moving and trying to pick off the shots. He's being aggressive at times, going the body, going forward. He actually backed up on him in that last round. Nice 
shot there. Big left hand from Arfadalia. Roman trying to punch through it. Stop! 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 I got you. Box. Championship rounds with the WBA and IBF Super Bantamweight title on the line. Well, you are right, Chris. Akhmedalia appears to be in outstanding shape. So far in this 11th round. If you're off with Dahlia, this is a round that maybe you want to take off. But if you're Roman, there's no, no time for you to take off any rounds. This, in quiet rounds like these, you should be putting the pressure and trying to take this fight. To MJ off with Dahlia. Left hand of the body from off with Dahlia. It's the same left hand that he landed earlier on Roman. to the books. Hey, you got the last round, Danny. Te la tienes que rifar. Okay, te la tienes que rifar, Daniel. Nada más, mantén tus manos arriba. Okay. Okay, hijo? Sí, To be honest with you, I don't know how the fight's going right now. Okay? Sí. Push, huh? Let's push on this. Okay? Okay. We need we need to make sure we need to make sure that you land some solid shots on this fucking guy right now so you okay. can take him, okay? okay. Jump the tool, man. Jump to go forward and put a fight. Three more minutes, Kaka. Kaka, three more minutes. Let's go. Hey, more punches. Interesting hearing the honesty from Eddie Gonzalez Ladies in the corner of Danny Roman saying, I'm not sure how it's going to be honest. Round. No, and, and you know what? They're telling him the truth. Eddie Gonzalez is telling him the truth. And that's the reason Eddie Gonzalez told us he didn't want this fight for Roman. But here we are in the last round. He needs, he needs to do something. He needs to hurt MJ Akhmedalia. Roman getting to that uppercut. See if we can stick it through the mix of Akhmedalia. Taking out the body, back to the upper 
Cup. This is what I expected from Roman earlier in the fight. Pressuring, backing up. MJ Akhmedaliyev to the body and pulling upstairs with four, five, six punch combinations. Putting the pressure on him, not letting him breathe. Yeah, I agree, Sergio. This first two minutes of this final round has been kind of vintage. Danny we didn't see much of this. He's not consistent enough throughout the fight. Now Roman again going back to that uppercut. Some of the most effective work we have seen from Danny Roman tonight coming in this 12th and final round. Is it too little, too late for Danny Roman? And this is why a lot of people, a lot of people in the business, rushed in this fight. Why would Roman take this, this chance on this Olympian, this, this, this really brilliant boxer puncher, not the value of him? Now we're seeing that exactly what people saw, and this is why they had him the favorite. Ten seconds. Final 10 seconds of the 12th and final round. Akhmedaliyev at a 39-13 edge in landed punches in rounds 10 and 11. But then Danny Roman asserted himself in the 12th and final round. Sergio, how do you think this is going to end up being scored? Well, I expected Daniel Roman to, to start off earlier. Just like he closed off that last 12th round, I expected this fight to be a little bit more, more brutal, a little bit more violent, more physical. But Akhmedaliyev didn't let it get there. So I really like the boxing that Akhmedaliyev did. I, I like that he controlled the, the, the pace of the fight. And I think Roman's corner, Eddie Gonzalez, there, there was concern in his voice in the corner. So I think we already know that even they, they know that maybe they didn't pull off this fight. And if that's the case, Akhmedaliyev ties Leon Spinks and becoming the, the, the uh, a unified champion at eight fights, eight professional fights. Take a look at the recap from this 12 round bout. And it was Akhmedaliyev landing shots and not staying there long enough to, to let Roman lend anything in return. The most success that Roman had was through the body and with the uppercuts. Just like that right there. But anytime he would land something big, Akhmedaliyev will come back with four, five, six punches backing up Roman. Those are good shots right there. Fighting on his back foot, Roman. Well, we will get the decision now from David Diamante. Ladies and gentlemen, can we get a nice round of applause out here for both of these fighters? After 12 rounds of action, we go to the judges' score totals. They read as follows. Frank Gentile, Rodolfo Aguilar, 115-113, Roman. Carlos Sucre, 115-113, Akhmadaliev. Nelson Vasquez scores this contest, 115-113, for your winner by split decision and the new unified WBA and IBF Super Bantamweight Champion of the World, Muradon MJ Akhmadiyev. Well, a new champion, MJ Akhmadiyev. A winner by split decision as Danny Roman took the risk and ended up paying the price. Took the risk, but it wasn't Roman's. Someone had to tell Roman maybe the best choice here is not to face an unknown 
Street Fighter with this much pedigree, this kind of style, it was going to be very difficult to beat Akudalia. And that's the reason they have so much confidence taking this fight and only its eighth fight. And now he ties Leon Spinks, becoming the unified champion at only eight fights.